Hello. Eternity. One dictionary describes it as time that never ends. And perhaps you're feeling that the current restrictions and limitations are, seem to be going on for an eternity, never ending. When is it going to stop? Or maybe that you're finding the restrictions are giving you more time and space to contemplate and slow down and to reflect. Well, however you're feeling, I want to welcome you to Christchurch. You're amongst friends here, brothers and sisters even. And as we focus our hearts and our minds on our eternal God and Father, my prayer is that we will all be blessed and encouraged to keep walking with him for eternity. We're continuing our lockdown series on the attributes of God and today we think about our eternal God and Susan's going to be helping us to do that. We'll also hear some words from the Bible and be led in prayer by uh, my home group. But before we hear our first reading from Alan, Sam, Katie and Ruth, let me pray for us. Eternal God, thank you that we don't have to be together in one place to be in your presence. We ask that as we meet with you now, that you will meet with us. Strengthen our faith, encourage our hearts, give us peace and joy, and equip us to make you known where we can. Amen. And so our first reading and the first part of our reflection from Susan. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8, a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hello everyone. In our usual lives, we live very much within the framework of time, rhythms of minutes, hours, day and night, daily routines, weekly activities, annual events, seasons, phases of life. We tend to feel safe and secure within these times and seasons, although perhaps sometimes bound within them. So the thought of eternity is hard for us to conceive or understand. Eternity, ever and ever. As Bobby said, lockdown may have seemed like forever already. If you're anything like me, it can be tricky to even remember the day or the date at the moment as we don't have our usual markers. Or a long car journey for young children can feel never ending with cries of, are we nearly there yet? Today, as we continue our series on the nature of God, we're thinking about the God of eternity. God is eternal without beginning or end, uncreated, everlasting, never able to die. He was there before the beginning of time and throughout history. He is present now and will go on forever. Here are a few verses about this. The Psalm 90 verses 2 to 4, before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Isaiah 40 verse 28 Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, 
the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Revelation 1 verse 8 I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. So what does God, being eternal or everlasting, mean for us? There are many things, but I'll start us off with some thoughts. You might want to build on them later. Our eternal God offers us eternal life. John 3 verse 16 For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. So, when we put our trust in Jesus and give our lives to him, he gives us eternal life. To me, this doesn't just mean a ticket into heaven when we die, but eternal life starting right now, here on earth, life in all its fullness, knowing God's presence and direction, peace and joy, bringing us fulfilment and purpose, and so much more. In Jeremiah 31 verse 3, God said about his people, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. We are loved endlessly by God. Knowing that God is eternal and not going to end or leave can help us to put our trust in him. Our relationship with him can keep growing and deepening as there's always more for us to discover about him. It's a lifelong adventure. And having an everlasting God who offers us eternal life means we have a hope for the future, the assurance that we will be with him forever. You may have heard the phrase, being too heavenly minded for any earthly use. But are we heavenly minded at all? Or does our focus tend to be on the here and now? Philippians 3 verse 19 says, Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship, our permanent home, is in heaven. All this around us is temporary. This may help us to reflect on our priorities perhaps not holding on so tightly to material things, but investing in building God's kingdom, not allowing ourselves to get bogged down with things that will pass. So what is heaven like? Here's our second reading. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 7, a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. 
Thank you, Bobby. An amazing place and something to look forward to. I'd like to recommend a book to you at this point, Heaven by Paula Gooder. It's a really good read with lots of food for thought. In this book, she talks of how heaven has been depicted in popular culture, in art and films and songs, as merely a place where we go to when we die, and that when we get there, the experience will be one of contentment and bliss. As Christians within this culture, we may have bought into this too. But biblically, the main portrayal of heaven is the dwelling place of God above the earth, where God is worshipped day and night by angels. In heaven, God is on his throne, and Jesus sits at the right hand of God, where he receives honour, power and authority due to him, reigning alongside God over the whole created order. Heaven and earth are seen to be intimately connected. From heaven, God intervenes in the things of earth by hearing the cries of humanity, by sending angels and sometimes even intervening directly. We communicate with God from earth by his Holy Spirit. Heaven isn't merely a place for some time later. Heavenly activity is already taking place. So what can this mean for us now? When we worship, we join with the worship of heaven. We may not always feel it, but it is what we're doing. This can encourage us when worship feels hard, and perhaps it feels particularly hard in lockdown when we can't all be together. And this understanding of heaven allows us to catch a glimpse, not just of the world as it is now, but of the world as it might be, a world shaped by the love of God and reign of God. It introduces a new dimension into the life we live today. We seek to bring heavenly values here on earth, where we are. We pray this in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Living this out, would include caring for our planet, compassion towards people, working for peace, many other things. So, to sum up, our God is everlasting. He was there before the beginning of time and throughout history. He's present now and will go on forever. He offers us eternal life. When we believe in Jesus, starting now, life in all its fullness. We are loved by God with an everlasting love. Our relationship with him can keep growing and deepening as there's always more for us to discover about him. We have the hope of heaven, where we will be with God forever, worshipping him face to face. No more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. And we can become more aware of heaven and earth being intimately connected, and can seek to bring heavenly values to life here on earth. Let's pray for a moment. Thank you, Lord, that you are eternal. You're so much bigger than we can ever understand or imagine. Thank you for loving us endlessly. Thank you for your gift to us of eternal life. We look forward to being with you one day, face to face. But for the here and now, please enlarge our vision. Help us to glimpse the taste of heaven in our worship and in the ways we seek to bring your kingdom values to the people and places around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Susan. Let's uh, bring some of the needs of our world.
before our God now in prayer. Everlasting God, we thank you for the promise of an eternal life with you, both now and in the life to come. Help us to live lives worthy of you and in line with your kingdom values and priorities. Help us to make you known to others so that others may experience the love, joy and peace that you bring. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the relationship that we have with you. We ask that you would help us to get to know you better as we focus on different aspects of your character each Sunday. Help us to grow in our love, knowledge, worship and service of you. Help us to become the people you created us to be. Amen. Loving God, on the final day of Mental Health Awareness Week, we pray for all those who are struggling mentally, especially with the heightened anxiety, loss and isolation that our current situation brings. We pray for healing and for courage to seek help. Help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear the pain below the surface and give us the love and courage we need to reach out to others. Amen. Sovereign God, we pray for our government, for those who would advise them and for all in positions of responsibility and leadership. Give them wisdom to make good decisions and the right responses to the issues that the coronavirus has raised. Help them to find the right path through this time of uncertainty. We pray too for those working on vaccines and treatments for the virus and we ask that you would give success and that that success would be shared across the world. Amen. Saviour God, we pray for your worldwide church in this time when normal ways of doing church are suspended. We ask that you would refine and restore your church. We pray especially for our own church in this time of vacancy. Strengthen and enable all who serve you here and provide the right person and the right time to lead us through our vicar. Amen. Thank you, Terry, Jill, Charlotte, Aaron and Rachel. We hope that you found much to strengthen you today as well as encouragement to spur us on to be part of the bringing of God's kingdom into our little bit of the world. A final prayer. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We finish listening to Give Thanks to the Lord our God and King, brought to us by Sarah and illustrated with images interpreting eternity, some of which have been sent in by the congregation. <laughs>